Hello everyone, and welcome back to another reaction video, and we're here with another Jaden Animation video, and yeah, as you can tell from the screen, it is about Pokemon, and this video is called The Darkest Pokemon Game You've Never Played, and from the, the thumbnail, I'm pretty sure they're talking about So that'll be fun. And yeah, uh, do the like, comment, subscribe thing, all that. Do the same with her channel. And I'm just gonna get right into it. So yeah, three, two, one, let's go. I've played a lot of Pokemon in my days, and by that, I mean I've played the same Pokemon game with various different skins. But True. I'm here today to showcase one of, if not the most unique ideas for a Pokemon game Nintendo has published for our tiny little hearts. And that game is called Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness. There it is. XD. A bit unfortunate, but <laughs> it came out in 2005, so they get a pass. Why yeah. am I talking about it? I think it's an underground game not enough people know about. It does something different, kind of shakes up the formula. It's constantly overshadowed by its predecessor, Pokemon Coliseum. Let's go. And yeah, okay, I played it as a kid. I'm very biased. Is that what you wanted? If you've not heard of it or played it, you're <laughs> in for a treat today. The game opens up to a cargo boat, the SS Libra, hey. out at sea, where we find the captain and guy who steers standing at the helm. All is calm and serene when suddenly they get swatted. And it's not no ordinary SWAT today, folks. No, sir. This is a Lugia SWAT. They run out to see Yo, what's going is. on, and the captain looks up and makes his face as if he wants to kiss Lugia passionately on the lips. But Lugia's okay. not here for kisses. He's here for the opposite of kisses. Which is crime. He hi- True. True. Uh, yeah. Anyway. Uh, yeah. Again, this is one of the- Again, this is one of those Pokemon games that I have not completed. Like Platinum. I do want to do a playthrough on my channel. Anyway. Uh, back Paper to this. beams the cargo ship and then steals it. You heard me right. Just blasts the thing point blank and takes it away. Lugia's ship now. The presumably only two people on the entire <laughs> boat fall into the water and are left to just drown in the ocean, <laughs> I guess. Well, that was a bit raw. What are we, a minute in and two people are dead? When I was young, I was always told if you shaved, it would grow back faster. And so at a young age, Gen 10 could never. Back Hard to cut to me because that's more important. You play as this hey. boy kid named Michael, but actually his name is Jaden now because that's me. The game throws you into the middle of this intense looking fight between a Salamence and Metagross, both level 50. I don't know where I am, what the stakes are, who I am, but this battle seems really important and tough, so I'm gonna give it my all and immediately Oko it. I did it! Screen goes black. <laughs> I open my eyes, everything's blurry. I did it. Wake up, Jaden, you've been in a coma for 15 years. <laughs> Turns out I live in a friendly laboratory run by this Professor Crane and his lab guys. This I get up and the guy the running lab. the battle simulation tells me how good of a battler I've become. Oh, thanks, man. Then he immediately negs me by telling me it's about time I go out and get myself more Pokemon besides my one lame Eevee. <laughs> Backhanded compliment at a child, but... I'll take it, I think. I go into Crane's office where him and my mom are talking, and he says he heard from the battle coach that my battling skills have improved dramatically, and how proud he is of me. To which my own mom tells him to stop giving me compliments and praise because I'm gonna end up spoiled rotten. Oof. I don't know what kind of a response that is to a child receiving praise. Either I'm already a cocky little <laughs> bastard, or I'm being currently emotionally neglected by everyone in this building. Whatever it is, I don't think it's healthy for my mental development. To make this mother look even worse, we realize her only other child, Jovi, is missing and no one is looking for her. Oh, this the world character. is only filled with overpowered wild rabbit animals and crazy people. No, I'm sure it's fine you haven't started looking for her. 
keep doing what you're doing. I get a lead saying she really likes hanging Mr. out with Ball. family friend mad scientist Dr. Kaminko, so I head over to his house and I'm about to knock on his creepy door when this tiny little blind man, Chobin, the doctor's assistant, walks up and is like, Burglar! and hmm. challenges me to a battle, to which I win because he only has a level 5 sun kern. Joby comes out and is like, Oh, hi, big brother. It's Joby. Did you get lost, big brother? Silly big brother. Joby will guide you back home. Yeah. All right. I see why no one was looking for her now. We return yeah, home to the lab. And they present me with a snag machine. A machine that allows the user to catch shadow Pokemon, which are Pokemon that have been so abused that they turn evil. Now, they're saying they haven't seen or heard of any shadow Pokemon that exist anymore because they've all been purified years ago. But who knows when they could start popping up again. Better be safe than sorry. Bam. Some guys from a secret organization called Cypher bust into the lab, beat everyone up, steal Professor Crane, show off their shadow. <laughs> Pokemon and run off to their secret base to never be seen again. There it is. Well, I'll be. The lab is in shambles, not knowing what to do, but then decides they're gonna complete their purification chamber in his honor because shadow Pokemon are back and they want to do something about it. They send me off to this seaside town Gadion port to retrieve a machine part they need, and Joby pesters our mom to come with because Joby doesn't think I can handle going out on my own, and Joby needs to hold my hand and guide her big brother the whole way. <laughs> okay, not only does this little snot talk in the third person for no reason, maybe our mom didn't care enough to get us any education perhaps she was worried the teacher would give us a compliment <laughs> heaven forbid but she's also the most annoying character i've ever witnessed in any media and i've watched an episode of my hero academia with a great kid in it we go Oof. to gallion port and not two seconds pass until joby pisses off this random <laughs> guy zook who happens to be the buffest man in the world he's about to punt her and True i'm about though. to do nothing about it when this old man and his color-coded henchmen step in and obliterate his shadow zangoose Old man, I was about to be free of everything that is bad in my life, and you took that away from me. We get the part, head back, and mom tells me about this spot in Agate Village called the Relic Stone where you can naturally purify Pokemon. I don't know why you're making your own purifying chamber then when there's a rock that already does that. True. I go to Agate, and this very enthusiastic man with a Pikachu shows me the stone, and I'm like, That's a Pikachu. Cool. To which he's like, By the way, my friend Vander might know where Cypher took Crane. Oh. Okay. I go talk to Vander and he points Just to this casually. random spot in the desert on my map and is like, Oh, they're right here. I saw them. <laughs> what were you doing out there? That's literally just sand. <laughs> well, would you look at that? A headquarters. Huh. I start infiltrating the base, battling all the grunts that fall from the ceiling, snagging yeah, any shadow Pokemon that. I find, until I reach Pink Hatsuna Miku, who's trying to get information out of Crane about purifying shadow Pokemon. I battle her and win, which means I get to unkidnap him, and while heading out, I find this data ROM on the ground. Huh. This seems very important and like it has a lot of secret information about Cypher on it. Convenient. Brain returns to the lab and everyone's happy and then they send me to Pyrite Town to find Ned, a guy that should be able to crack the ROM and access all the information on it. So I head there and he's like, yeah, we can crack this, smile. While he's <laughs> hacking it, I go out and play around in a random cave and run into Mirror B. Let's this go. guy doesn't do much in this game, Let's go. honestly, but I just want to make sure you know he exists and listen to his music. Legend. I'm Screw you. When you customize a new lightsaber, you can choose your destiny. New I don't care. Not included. I'm trying to listen to Mirror B's theme. I go check on Ned again, and Cypher's bust in. He has some of the best music in Pokemon. Hands down. Like, yeah. One thing I will say that a lot of people can't agree on if they play both games. If you learn, if you like Mirror B a lot, I'd say play Pokemon Coliseum because he has more of a role in there. And once again, he has an amazing theme. Anyway, yeah.
beat everyone up and kidnapped another person. Have you guys min-maxed how to kidnap people or something? You're two for two at this point and are scarily efficient at it. They tried a hostage situation the data ROM back and even though I beat up this big man and take all his shadow Pokemon, Nat still wusses out and gives the ROM back. He thought he was being two steps ahead because he saved all the information on his server already, but Cypher just logs on and deletes everything anyway. Oof. Nat says the only thing he remembers from the ROM was that Cypher was behind the disappearance of the SS Libra, and they're about to attack this city nearby called Fennec, and someone needs to go warn them. <laughs> I guess I'm just Mr. Scooter across the desert and save everyone today, aren't I? I head to Fennec yeah. to warn the mayor about the attack, and as soon as I arrive, this lady hits me with a confetti cannon, congratulates me on being the millionth visitor to the city, and shoos me away to celebrate at real gam tower i try to get around hey. her because this is important but she's determined to gatekeep me no matter what i do so i just go there and realize she literally sent a child to illegally gamble his life away wow no one in this region likes children do they <laughs> after not being able to figure out how to play bingo i head back sneak into the mayor's house distract his house sitter with music and find out the mayor was trying to write a note to justy the city's gym leader warning him about the cypher attack Just i don't know why the mayor was trying to ask this random gym guy to help but he was kidnapped halfway through writing it so i guess it doesn't matter Oof. cypher realizes i now know what's up and everyone in town reveals themselves to be disguised cypher grunts oh my god they kidnapped the entire town i don't care what kind of organization <laughs> the cypher dude up and everyone in town reveals themselves to pay attention to cypher dude cypher grunts oh my god they kidnapped the entire town i there. don't care what kind of organization oh that's from. great if you can successfully kidnap a village you've earned my respect i beat up cypher rescue their shadow pokemon and hey. free literally everyone in the town who is locked in the city basement justy says he saw something suspicious going on in the desert and points to another random sand spot on my map i should go investigate honestly how are all these people just stumbling onto these shenanigans in the middle of the desert true and why are they able to give the latitude longitude of these locations after finding them true this has gotta be like tens of miles out from any sort of civilization this is where people run out of gas in their car and then shrivel up and die before anyone can find them why were you here wow yep that's the cargo ship how did you hmm. find this all right what is so enthralling about this desert that crime and vigilante justice is constantly going on in every square inch of this place <laughs> cypher is running around on the ship and after i take their shadow pokemon and chase them out this group of strangers calling themselves team snack hey. walks up and droopies me i wake up realize they stole my snack machine this random old man who just started living in the wrecked boat said he saw them head off in that direction and points to the middle of nowhere on my map again you people are beyond me <laughs> i show up and wow another headquarters for crime i make my way to hey. the head honcho gonzap who's trying to put on my snag machine but he's too big and muscular and adult and since i am a child it does not fit on his giant muscle arm he pretty Oof. much gives up asks if i want to join team snag him i say yes but he fights me anyway and after i beat him he's like actually you can have your arm thing back we're not enemies I will say that a thing Colosseum, in my opinion, does better than XD is the main character. Because in this, he's, you know, typical, you know, kid main character who goes on, you know, this quest and does stuff. The main character in Colosseum, however, is well he was a part of team snagum and so yeah and I'm pretty sure he was older so yeah honestly I kind of want more protagonists like that in Pokemon like, games if not in the main series then in like spin-offs and stuff because that's actually a really cool idea Anyway, back to video. Awesome. So why am I here? You drugged me, stole my stuff, and then just called friendship and gave it back. I find Cypher's shadow Pokemon factory and walk up to the actual biggest men I've ever seen in the world. True. How naive I was to think Zook was big. 
Foolish me. Anyway, they're about to beat me TF up when Gonzap shows up, expresses his devotion to our newly blossoming friendship, and rubies them for hey. me. Thanks, man. You're really consistent at that. I go inside and climb to the roof where their power generator is. There's a tiny little piece of paper there that says, Use system lever to adjust voltage. Do not raise voltage too high. Crank! A guy <laughs> comes out and starts yelling at me with his Pokemon when the tiny old man who accidentally ruined my life in Gadian Port comes on screen and is like, I'm evil and creating a Pokemon that's unpurifiable. <laughs> Come get me. This is my IP address. I need to cross the ocean to get to him because he's basically oh, yeah. on evil Hawaii. So I take this Robo Kyogre from Kaminko, speed that's my actually way there, sick. and you guessed it. Fight everyone in the building slash volcano until I get to the big little man. After fighting an entire country's worth of people, I find him. His name's Greeble, by the way. Obviously. And he's like, I'm surprised you made it this far. Ha 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 ha. Well, I'm busy, don't bother me. And blocks me with a giant pane of glass. Honestly, out of all the fictional <laughs> villains I've seen, this is surprisingly decently reasonable. But I'm not True. gonna just sit here and stare at him behind the glass like a goldfish at PetSmart. So I just <laughs> walk around and use the side door, which really sets him off. I mean, dude, either lock the door or don't have it. This is just what doors do. Grievel's like, you blew up our shadow Pokemon factory. You got past my glass. That's it. I'm summoning Shadow Lugia, the first hey. Pokemon to ever be unpurifiable. Come forth and obliterate this small boy. To which I just master ball it. There really it is. overlooked that one, didn't you, mate? He may not be purifiable, but he's mine now. <laughs> Huge L. Grievel gets so beyond pissed that he decides to open his creepy eyes and fight me himself. And I was surprised to realize not only does he have a team of all shadow Pokemon, but he somehow nabbed Articuno, Zapdos, and Moltres. I'll be honest, it was a really, really hard That's fight because team. shadow Pokemon are super effective against all non-shadow Pokemon. I don't True. know how it took me this long to tell you that, but that's how it works. So instead of trying to catch them all like I've been doing this whole time, I really just beat them up and they ran away. So I win! Cypher has officially lost everything, and it's all because of me, the little boy. Blue Henchman runs up to Grievel and is like, Sir, I have a plan. Let's blow up the island with the kid on it. Which is like, oh my god. And then oh. Red Henchman is like, okay, that's a bit too far, man. Dad, let's go home. He yes, has they sense. They pulled the I'm your father slash son twist on us. But it has very little effect on me because I do not care about these people. Anyway, they decide to not blow up the island with me on it and stop being evil, I think. I'm like 60% sure. <laughs> and then happy ending, I just go home. So what do you think? <laughs> For some reason, I really liked the game as a kid. I never actually beat it because I didn't know how to get past the gatekeeping woman in Fennec. Glad I figured it out this time. I, I mean, you got further than I have. I think I got stuck on either the town or agate. The place where you find Mirror B. I also wanted to so, mention yeah. how lively the animations are in this game. Sure, some of the Pokemon look god awful. <laughs> they gave Houndor human knees that bent forward, but they're all Oof. just so expressive and show so much care and personality. It may be pretty sad the current games don't show this much passion, but I guess that's yeah. just what makes these games more cherishable. Anyway, the game was fun and weird. I liked it. See ya. Alright, so that was the darkest Pokemon game you've never played. And yeah, this was a fun video. And yeah. Also, I'm wanting to tell you this now if you want to play this game. Like, the actual like disc copy. Uh, fun fact, it's $200 basically. So good luck with that. Uh, yeah. Anyway. Uh. Yeah. I do want to play this game as a let's play on the channel, and I'm gonna be using an emulator because I don't have enough money for the actual disc or a capture card or just all that. So yeah, I look forward to that. If I can figure it out, that is. Anyway, sub to me, sub to Jaden. 
do all that stuff. And yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.